music retail is in the middle of shedding its skin. Now we're all living this. We're living this in our own lives, our families' lives as consumers. And we're living it as we run our own businesses. We have people operating multi-million dollar retail businesses from their bedrooms using little more than an iPhone. We have news that Amazon now has software that can predict what inventory to buy, how much to buy, and even the next big product. We also have the sharing economy coming to music products industry. Anyone heard of the company called Fredish? It's an Airbnb for musical instrument gear rentals. So this is happening and it's happening now. So this raises the question. In our industry, who's ushering in the next phase of retail? Who represents what's now, what's potentially disruptive, and what's next? And most importantly, how do they view the industry? Because if one thing's clear, the retail model as we know it has been blown up. It used to be kind of a simple proposition. Open a store, stock it with great gear, usually your own gear, find some good staff, eventually grow. That is but one of the many ways to operate now. So this morning, we're going to talk about retail innovations. And I thought we'd look at a, a few retail innovations and everything from business models to serving your customers to how you're incorporating technology. So if you leave here with one thing this morning, please, please keep this in mind. It's to keep blowing up your own business model over and over again. You are uniquely qualified to do this, so don't wait for someone else to do it for you. The people you are about to hear from, they are doing it every day. All right, let's get started. Our first guest represents, in my opinion, innovation in everything from store events to music lessons to the customer experience. And on top of that, he's just a master at good old-fashioned retailing, which we never want to leave. Let's find out what he's been up to and hear about his latest innovations. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Toronto, Canada, please welcome Mark Hebert of Cosmo Music. Mark, come on out. Don't let this whole Canadian thing get in the way. <laughs> hey, Mark, how are you doing? All right. So the next thing, there were two things I want to talk about you today. And the other one was about lessons, about the role of our industry in, uh, in retail, especially in teaching music and creating um, more music makers. I mean, the whole idea is I think we all have this task, regardless of what role we play in the industry. And I just summed it up as MSFQ, getting more to start and fewer to quit. That's the game. Everything else is all fun after that. But if we can get more people to start playing and fewer to quit, the industry will grow. But lessons and our stores have a big, important role in that. So how are you guys approaching it, and what's next for lessons? Yeah, so we have a huge, uh, huge school in our store. We've got uh, 39 lesson rooms, over 2,000 kids, uh, from private to group lessons. Um, it's extremely important for us, extremely important. But we've, we've seen the lesson market get soft. You know, uh, I don't know if we're different than anybody else, but we have an active marketing campaign. We've, we're not doing anything any different than we did, we did before. We've got lots of value add and experience for all of the students in the store, but we've seen it get a little soft and over the last couple of years. So about a, a, year, a year ago, um, we started investing uh, with a partner and some personnel into coming up with an online uh, platform because um, we knew that was the future. And we, we see a lot of our customers, and I've been speaking to my friends and um, friends' families about what they were doing, and, and we saw a lot of people going to YouTube and different learning platforms, um, or getting teachers to come to their homes, like local teachers to come in their homes. So we saw this kind of as, as leakage and what was going on in the store. I also see millennials and younger, younger folks coming into the market who are now having children, and, I, and I, I have a feeling they're gonna be less likely to wanna to come to a brick and mortar location, take lessons. So, so in order to combat that, uh, we started investing in an online platform. Uh, the online platform is, is unbelievable. So this is kind of a, a, a dream me and my executive team had come up with, and uh, to make a small, uh, long story short, we basically on a, on a cocktail napkin, we've written out everything we need for an online platform, including an LMS, a learning management system. We need uh, accountability when it comes to practice schedules for kids. We need like Skype style video one-on-one, -on -one, um, proper and robust scheduling, which we all need for our brick and mortar locations. 
So you laid out the dream list. We laid out the dream list. Where were you when you laid out the dream list? We were in a bar eating wings and having you guys beer. you see a theme here about <laughs> this uh, beer thing up in Canada? Like, yeah. Uh, just, uh, that's not important. But what is important is you created this dream list. Okay, please go on. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it happened to be a couple of weeks before NAM, two years ago, yeah. uh, winter NAM. So we created this dream list, and, and I had this crazy idea of having like physical tablets in people's music rooms that were only meant to to be for music lessons so they so you know dad wouldn't have the laptop or the tablet when it when it's time for your music lesson and you got to connect through Skype or whatever video conferencing uh, software to your music teacher so this vision came out and uh, spilled out onto a cocktail napkin and no word of a lie I came to my office the next morning opened my computer and the first email in there was this uh, from this company called Teacher Zone, and I I'd, I'd never heard of this before, and I read the email, and it was like exactly what we'd written on the cocktail napkin, <laughs> and this is fate. Like there's something wrong here. So I immediately called Chris and said, "What are you doing? This is this is amazing." He's like, "Oh, and he he's passionate about the, his project, and and uh, so uh, we immediately formed a partnership." So uh, we're building upon, we're helping him build a better platform. He's helping us uh, build a better community. Uh, it's, it's not launched yet, but we've introduced his scheduling, all of his scheduling platform yeah. after about a year of tweaks uh, into our brick and mortar locations. We're actually physically using it now. Um, and the next, next step is going online with it. So this is Chris Bates from Teacher Zone. Chris Bates. You yeah. met him at the, so you guys met at Winter Nam and started working this thing. Then we met at, at Winter Nam, and he yeah. was just as passionate in person as yeah. he was on the phone. Oh, right. well, Chris! I think Chris Bates is here. Chris Bates from Teacher Zone. Come on out. I want to hear about. I want to hear from the founder. Hey man. <laughs> thank you. Come on out. All right, have a seat here. We're doing the Johnny Carson thing. Oh, Come thank you. Out. So you guys met at Winter Nam and we did. Finding out that the cocktail napkin was kind of matching up with what, I don't know if you formed your Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's so, great. so we'll take it from there. What In happened? fact, uh, I should get mine and we can frame them together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So yeah, you know, um, I think what you said is crucial to MS, FQ. FQ. Um, at the end of the day, we have to all look in the lesson business at what are the right. three years ahead if you can and sort of say, how can I turn those threats into opportunities? And so that's kind of what we're trying to do is, is kind of look at all the different ways that we can help engage. I know Cosmo is so focused on engagement. And in a modern world, if you think about it, there's so much distraction. Um, the students aren't in your studio most of the time. So the question we're asking is what about the other six days a week? You know, how can we engage them? How can we daily remind them to get more engaged with their practice? give them more tools and more things to help them, you know, really fall in love with their instrument because once they do and they get to a certain level, then they become lifers. Um, but we can't do that unless they play enough, so. And this is a tool, I mean, how many, let's take a show of hand, how many of the retailers here today already have a teaching program that they're, they're pretty happy with? How many would actually like to improve their teaching program, get more students and more MSFQ? I think, so I think we all struggle with it. I mean, for a lot of retailers, I remember the, the, re, the teaching program was just, it was very complicated, and it wasn't a core of our retailing business, but we knew we had to do it. Uh, so there's a platform that you'll be creating that, I mean, not to be an ad for anything, but tell me more about what you're building so we, how so we, dealers might use it. We're, we're now working with um, studios all over the world, and um, Cosmo in Canada, and then uh, we're in 44 states, and UK and Australia. And, and basically what we're doing is uh, we're, we're trying to, you know, um, take the whole experience that you get in person and help impart that to other monetization opportunities. For instance, virtual lessons, video lessons, like uh, we happen to own our own studio as well in California. And, and when students go to college, you know, we're now able to keep them engaged while they're in college. They can still do virtual and or video lessons with, with the instructor they have come to know and love. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. If you were to quit part. I mean, you know, retention is, is important to me as recruitment because especially at eighth to ninth grade, if you're in school programs, you tend to drop off. Once you get into high school, you got all these other distractions, you tend to drop off. The drop off we see into those teen years is unacceptable. And if you can find a way to keep them engaged longer as they go into these other, whatever, sports, go on to college. So you think technology will be the way to 
connect into I think it's more important. To, yeah, it's an important leverage opportunity, right? Because, you know, let's face it. Um, anybody here have kids? Uh, we all know how amazing and, and savvy they are with devices and, and online. And, and so um, they're not afraid to seek information. So we have to change the way we're teaching. We're no longer teaching music. We're now mentoring and coaching. Because teaching is disseminating information, right? Well, we can get that in a multimedia format. Yeah. So there's lots of ways to get that data. So we can utilize the technology so the students are able to access the data the other six days a week. They're able to communicate um, you know, with their instructors and their studios even when they're not in person. So I think Mark, you nailed a couple of the biggest issues were the, the barriers were logistics, getting someone to your store. And with California where we live, traffic is crazy. People are already engaged in, in too much running around. And time, time of day. And so if those two things can be addressed, I think that alone would make a huge difference in the retention. If you can solve the problem of geography, you don't have to be close to a store, you don't have to be close to your, you know, physically close to your teacher if you move away to college. And the idea of time, I want it on my time, when I'm available, when I have the break. If you solve those two alone, let alone the engagement part, I think you'll have a huge impact on well, education. Mark said something really important uh, to me once where, where you were saying if we can move the needle 1%, Right? If we can grow just a little bit, it's massive for our industry. Yeah. The whole market. That's a, that's a great point. And I did say that. Didn't yeah. I? Brilliant. <laughs> um, in a bar, probably. That's all right. <laughs> I, I think the first barrier that you're in, in your internal staff, and that maybe some of the people here are saying is, but lessons, it draws people into my store, and then they buy stuff. Very true. And that was something we struggled with for a long time. But the reality is if you can cultivate a bigger market, we can create a bigger market, and that 1% number is a, is, is a low number, that's 1%. If we can get more people making music in general in your geographical area, then you're going to have more people coming into your store inherently, yep. right? So that needs to be the goal, not let's get the people who are already creating music, or, or the only the people who are taking lessons in my brick and mortar store yep. coming back to buy stuff. You need to look, we need, all need to look at the bigger picture. Right, and then uh, they'll, then hopefully they infect their friends, and infect, you know it becomes the gift that keeps on giving. Um, the the last thing I, that come, came to my mind when you said that is the one thing we find with a lot of us um, is there's too much friction, and so you know I would say that we all got to look to reduce that any way we can, whether that's communication, whether that's not automating your billing, whether that's whatever it is that's causing friction that would cause someone to not want to come back or not want to keep playing, we get we have to look to reduce that technology can help with that. Yeah, right friction there. also often has a cost associated with it. Mm. And if you could, you know, efficiency across all those would help the store and help the consumer, of course. Mm. All right, Teacher Zone, if you want to really think about it, get online and, and read more about it. But I think anything we can do as an industry, and I think it is a responsibility, it's, uh, it's, our, it's on us. Yeah, the public schools are doing a decent job in some places. Yeah, parents that are already inclined to get their kids to lessons will find a way. We already got them. Let's not worry about that too much. Let's get the other ones. Let's get those ones who always wish they could and just felt some barrier. More to start, fewer to quit. All right, thanks, guys. All right. Love it. Teacher Zone and Cosmo Music. Thank you. You did great, man. Thank you. Off you go. Off with you now. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Appreciate it.